Brown boss. Brown boss. That you know, touch on like what about come for the money, man, for that could have been ever and that. I need the music because it's a commotion. Got to the most honorable Andrew Wallace to bring our keynote for this topic. And now, of course, we are at Union Acres, 144 units, and we are handing over 50 of those units today. Welcome to my channel, Brown Boss JA Tours. So I'm here today at the house handing over ceremony for Union Acres, just right beside the Meadows of Rearing. As you can see depicted on the Google Maps right now, it hasn't been updated, but it's in between the section that you see highlighted where X marks the spot. Yes, people. So I'm here today just walking, showing you guys what took place at the event where the um, Prime Minister of Jamaica the Honorable Dr. Andrew Holness made a presentation along with other stakeholders and they gave the keys over to 50 new homeowners here at Union Acres. Yes, my people, so I do have a lot in store for you today, as you will hear from the uh, Prime Minister soon, as he um, give you the, the actual plans that they have for, you know, St. James, Spontigo Bay and uh, by extension, the entire Jamaica. Yes, people, so Union Acres is a joint venture project of the NHT, Jamaica Civil Service Association, and Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions. The development is located here at Irwin, within easy access to all recreational and commercial opportunities here in Montego Bay. So I would have done the... um house tour that was provided between june 7th to um, june 9th for those of you who have not watched that video as yet i do have the uh, link in the description you can check that out or you can stay at the end of this video you will also see the link populated on your screen and you can click on the video and watch it all right guys so i would have done a tour of the um furnished and also an unfurnished unit here at Union Acres, so that's definitely something that you would want to see. Today they will be handing over the keys for um, 50 NHT uh, contributors who actually were successful with applying for the housing units um, on the NHT website. It was really something, you know, persons waking up as early as 12 a.m. in the morning trying to, um, you know, get a chance to get one of these houses. All right, but only 50 were selected in total they have about 144 um units um the others would be like you know designated for civil servants uh police nurses doctors teachers um and so forth um please correct me if i'm mistaken but yes the the houses they start at a selling price of 16 million to 16.5 million features in this house um, or in the houses would include ceramic floor tiles, floor and wall mounted kitchen cupboards, double sliding UPVC windows, hollow steel Tuscan step tile pitch roof and a whole lot more. So stay tuned guys, a whole lot to be shown in this um, video today. Stay tuned. A heart speed to the city streets we begin to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young and it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We want to chase the night Ladies and gentlemen, coming to us at this time is Prime Minister and Portfolio Minister with responsibility for the NHT, Dr. the Most Honorable Andrew Wallace, to bring our keynote for this afternoon. So much things to say right now. Right, 
keep riding my head if we can't talk. We're in it, we're in it. some dissonance in what polls are saying. And it leads me to think that there is obviously a lag time between people appreciating the results and the results themselves. But there's always a difference between how people feel emotionally and how they perceive reality. So there is always a difference between perception and perspective. Always. And that is why we have these ceremonies. The ceremonies are just for the official declaration. It is an opportunity for us to place actions into perspective to ensure that the persons who are going to benefit from these polls and the wider public listening have a deep perspective and a context to what is happening. Let me share one dimension of today's proceedings which I'm certain would have escaped 90% of those who are here and those listening. My very good friend is the head of the unions, and I hope I got your title right, um, Patrice St. Clair Ennis, pointed out that we are here today because in 1992, that's how many years ago? 32 years ago? The government of Jamaica, and I will tell you what, how old I was in 1992. I was still at the university, my first year at university. Anyway, in 1992, the government of Jamaica signed an agreement with the union. And I like how you characterize the agreement. And I'm going to unpack what you said. The unions then recognized that the country was in an almost impossible fiscal predicament. And you are hearing this word being used many times over and oftentimes dismissed as unimportant. Essentially, what it means is that the government was not in a position to pay the workers the increase that they deserve. They didn't have the revenues, the tax revenues. That's what it meant. 32 years ago. And being good partners, the unions agreed. They looked at the books of the government and they understood 
that the government couldn't make money out of here. And they said to the government, we're not going to let you off like that. Because it is your duty to create the revenues, to run the country in such a way that you can give the wage increases. So what we're going to do is to say to you the resources that you have on hand, which you have not converted into cash, but which can be used to help with the development of workers. We're going to create an agreement around that for the development of our workers. You have lands that you're not using. You can give scholarships to the children of workers and the workers themselves. You can give concessionary access to the NHT resources. Well, put those in a package and we will sign to them. The initial agreement was that the unions would get, I believe it is 20 acres per parish. You see those people who talk nonsense of the country not going in the right way and that nothing has changed in Jamaica. I urge them before they open their mouth, in the information age, just go and Google. That was the situation 32 years ago. Today, the government has allocated $200 billion to make the adjustment in public sector wages. why it is important that we have these ceremonies so that we can place things in context because ignorance is abroad in our land. The truth is 32 years ago the students who are going to be graduating they wouldn't know anything about that. That's not the Jamaica that they experience today. The 30 year old won't know about the parlor state of Jamaica during that period of time. But I want to give you further context for you to ruminate on. Now, the lands that were given weren't all given at once. They were identified government has a land bank. But not every piece of land on paper that appears to be available is actually available. Many of the lands that were allocated under this 1992 agreement were informally occupied already, including this piece of land. They were squatted. So the government gave lands or pledged lands that couldn't be used. Not my government. Because I'm very clear about how land should be used. Not my government. So all those people talking without researching and looking at the facts, let me bring the facts to you. So though they signed the agreement with the unions, it could not be fulfilled. And for those lands that could be fulfilled, they came under competition from other government programs, one comes to mind readily, Operation Prime. So some of the lands that were pledged under this agreement for the unions were absorbed into Operation Prime. So, my friend, Patrice, when you 
you're saying we have to have a partnership to move things quickly. We, we need to tell the entire story and not gloss it over. So it is not as if the lands were all available for the project to move. Now, let's say there were some lands available and we could start some of the projects. Well, the first project started in 1997. Why? So from 2002 to 1997, what was the problem? The government bureaucracy to simply transfer the land from the government to the unions to demonstrate ownership. To just to move the lands off the government books to the unions. To this day, some of the lands pledge have not yet been transferred. Government bureaucracy. Not my government, just to be clear. The first project started in 1997. And it was completed when? The, the first set of lands were transferred in 1997. The first project started in 2002 and was completed in 2004. Everybody seeing that? Okay. And that project was handed over, I believe in 2007, and that is what we call now Union Estates. So from 2007 to now, we are going to be handing over Union Acres, 17 years later. You see why I say I have so many things to say? And I find myself in this position, not only having to do new projects and bring new things to the table, I spend a lot of my time trying to bring to closure many projects started by previous governments and not completed. I see my task as trying to complete things that previous governments started and just left it up in the air. Whether it is our movement to become a republic, whether it is the establishment of the order of national icons, or whether it is the completion of Union Acres. I want to just put that into the context so that when the public is discussing, they appreciate the challenges that we face. All of what I mentioned are projects started by other administrations 30, 40 years ago. It is my task to complete them, to bring them to a point of completion. So that the civil servants who made the agreement 32 years ago can finally have the benefit. So, as the children sang, and they sang so, so beautifully from Herbert Morrison, and I also reflected that it, this is the school of Usain Bolt. Not Bolt. Herbert Morrison, no. Right, you're right, Shulani. But they sang so beautifully. And I said to myself, you know, if only we could get our public bureaucracy. be 
as efficient as Usain Bolt runs fast. If only we could do things at the speed at which we praise our athletes, we praise them when they run fast. But it is as if if it is not done quickly in the public service, it's not done well. Or rather, if it is done slowly in the public service, it is not done well. And it is a challenge we face. How do we get the public service to move quickly? So that the people of Jamaica can benefit. It is the next challenge of this administration. How to increase the efficiency and productivity of the public service. So that the people who are waiting on the benefits don't have to wait 32 years to get them. So I use this just as an example of the challenge that this country faces. But the good news, the good news is that the NHD is moving much more quickly in getting houses built. And I want to point out that for this parish, the NHD will be developing 3,531 housing solutions. 3,531 housing solutions. Starting August uh, 2019, should be ready March 2026. And now, of course, we are at Union Acres, 144 units, and we are handing over 50 of those units today. In Adelphi, 217 under our GTP program, and that should have started in April 2025 and be ready in September 2028. Brookside Estates, that's Spot, Spot Valley, 403 units, again, under our GTP program, that will start in December of this year and be completed in September 2026. And Barrett Hall, St. James, under the Developers Program, that should start in March 2025. That's 1,565 units, and that should be ready in February of 2029. So we have, a, I like to call it, a train line of housing developments that are slated for this parish and they will all happen in very quick time for the people of this parish. For the entire area, the housing development for the entire area, the plan is 9,837 housing units for Trelawney, West Poland, Hanover and St. James in total. So, we're not just focusing on building the houses. We also are building some special projects in St. James. For example, the NHT has spent $38 million in completing the St. James Infirmary. And I see the, the mayor was here, you'd be very happy with that. The NHT is spending $200 million on the Anchovy Police Station. In scheme of rates, the NHD is spending $323.6 million on Farm Heights, Pit 4, Vaughan's Field, Bullocks Heights, Richmond Hill, and West Green housing developments, housing schemes. So the NHD is following the directive, and the directive is 
build more houses and build them quickly. The NHD has committed in total to build 43,000 housing solutions for Jamaicans. 43,000. <laughs> 9,000 plus will be for the Western region. And these are not empty promises. These are all projects that are in varying stages of development and will be delivered. Make sure that you have access to affordable mortgages. And we have made it such by several measures that the average Jamaican who is trying to own a home can get access to financing. And the NHT has put in place several innovative mechanisms to ensure that you can own a home. Firstly, we have said that if you are buying into an NHT scheme, you can get 100% financing. So the persons who are buying into this housing scheme, I'm certain will be benefiting from that if they choose to take it up. Depending on your salary range, you pay 0% on your mortgage, certainly if you are a minimum wage earner. And you can get 2% financing, again, depending on your salary range. So we are making it affordable so we're not just financing the construction of the homes which is what i have mentioned the homes we are involved in that's 43,000. but we are making it such that the mortgages are accessible then we have a home grant facility and that is for persons who are assessed as being in need or not able to afford you can actually get a home grant and that home grant can be as high as 3.5 million Jamaican dollars. We have a deferred mortgage scheme. And you can access that if you are able to afford 40% of the down payment on the house. We have an intergenerational mortgage, something that I'm happy for. That is something that my administration has put in. That if you are you know, getting up in age, you're 50 and over, and you got a mortgage, and you you know you, you probably won't be able to carry the payments for the mortgage. It doesn't match up with your income stream. You are able to partner with a child or another relative who would be able to demonstrate an income stream going into the future to cover the rest of the mortgage. Yes, the intergenerational mortgage is there to help you to access financing. And then we have put in place the triple applicant system. Before it was just two. Now, under certain provisions, three individuals with familial ties can get uh, individual benefits and co-make to get an NHD home. And then, for certain schemes, we give a subsidy. And of course, this would be one of the housing schemes that would benefit from a subsidy. So we are making it easier in terms of the financing to be able to acquire homes. The big challenge is that when the NHD is building, we do try to have some control over the price that comes to you. In the open market, we really don't have any control over the price, but what we try to control is the cost of the mortgage. And that is where government comes in. Government has to create the economic circumstances where we manage inflation and manage interest rates. And that is where economic policy is so important. If the government does not manage those two key, two key variables, then housing costs will get out of the room. I am pleased to say 
that the NHD will be moving on to the second, to the third project in short order. And after that, the fourth, fifth, and sixth, because we have now put the NHD in a position where the commitments made 32 years ago can be fulfilled. The other part of fulfilling that commitment is the speed at which the government does the transfer of the land and giving the construction approvals. Those are two areas in which we have to exert greater efforts. But the people who will benefit can rest assured that they will have mortgages that they can afford and subsidies to help because we are making it better and easier for every Jamaican to own their own home. God bless you and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister Bonus. Home ownership is indeed possible, um, thanks to the efforts of institutions like the NHT. And the different word for today, partnerships that the NHT gets itself into, with uh, whether it is our private developers under our guaranteed purchase program, partnerships with our, with our unions as we witness here today, that all brings it together. Uh, as you rightly indicated, Prime Minister, it's a housing finance institution. So on one side, the NHG is building out the, 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 the actual housing units, and you heard the numbers, 43,000 overall, approximately 10,000 in Western Jamaica. And uh, the other side, we're providing the mortgage financing, and we're happy to say the average Jamaican, actually the majority of Jamaicans, actually access a mortgage from the NHD at 0%. And we do, like you remind us from time to time, Prime Minister, that your, your, your edict to the NHD is to build more houses and to build them quickly. And we're working on them, sir. Thank you again for your presentation. Thanks very much and at this time um, just before I invite Prime Minister Holness back to the stage to lead the handover of keys I'd like to acknowledge as well uh, Ms. Rena Forbes a councillor caretaker who is representing I did indicate in, the, in, the, in establishing the protocols that the Honourable um, Marley Malahu Fort who is the Member of Parliament for the neighbouring uh, West Central St. James. They share the love in this area. She should have been here this afternoon, but she's not and she's being represented by Miss Rena Forbes. So we're now at the most anticipated moment of this ceremony, which is the individual handover of keys. And we'll invite our homeowners to the stage one at a time. They'll receive their keys as they embark on this new journey. And I would like to say to them that today as you receive these keys, may they serve as a reminder of the heroic achievement you have unlocked for yourselves, for your communities, and of course for your families for generations to come. Home ownership is one of those things that changes the trajectory not just of a particular individual, but an entire family at the time, but also for generations to come. And I'll invite at this time back to the platform, Prime Minister Holness, who will lead the handover of keys. If I could get some assistance in moving the, the lectern, I'd appreciate that. And I'll ask our, our beneficiaries as you come, you come up center, and I'll ask that you exit behind me on my left. begin the handover this afternoon with a Charmaine Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to be liberal with your round of applause for our beneficiaries this afternoon.
Tanisha Dixon. And one of the things, Prime Minister, you one of those policy measures you put in place is an increase in allocations to NHD contributors under the age of 36, ensuring that we're spreading the NHD benefit. And Ms. Dixon represents that cohort this afternoon. Let's keep the applause going for Marlene Shaw. Sterling Kenroy Buddington Lynn Campbell we make welcome another of our beneficiaries on our Young Adults program, Sade Campbell. Mackenzie Racine Brown Shamar Campbell Shanice Adams Marjorie Campbell Marjorie Headley, I stand corrected, sorry. Jean Cottrell McDonald. And I hope I get this one right. Car? Kerr? Alright, let's go with Peter Gay Hilton. Chrystia Lawrence. Gallardo, I'm sorry, we never got to about the house. I just wanted to make sure I got your name right. Andrea Gallardo. Thank you very much for your patience and thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister Holness. Let me at this time invite member of parliament 
the Honorable Edmund Bartlett to hand over the next set of keys to our beneficiaries. batch of beneficiaries with Lloyd Brown. Garfield Davidson. Gordon Vadney Lynch McFarlane Cena Allen Jarrett. Remain Antonio. Lisa Bowers Nicholas Campbell Janice Buckridge. Thank you very much, Janice. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Bartlett. And let me invite at this time the Chairman of the Jamaica Civil Service Housing Company, Mr. O'Neill Grant, to hand over the next batch of keys to our beneficiaries. We will begin this group with Lisa Rowe. Marlon Williams. <laughs> Elaine Edmondson. Nelson Horace Campbell Is it Chantel Clark Francis? Please make her welcome Colleen Lewis Miller
Rika Hastings. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Grant. Yes, thank you very much. And let me now invite NHD Chairman, Mr. Linville Freeman, to hand out the final batch of keys to our beneficiaries here this afternoon. And we'll begin this batch with Camille Brown. Nicolia Ramsey Davis. Damian Hudson Everell Jackson Wardle Lock Toya Swearing David Taylor Marshall E. Wanless Our final beneficiary receiving her key this afternoon, Monique Witter. <laughs> Just before you move, Chairman, one more for you, Lisa Carr. Nearly good with those, Lisa McFarlane, you're married, you know. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Lisa. And a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for all our beneficiaries this afternoon. And as we heard earlier, over 140 units in this development, but just 50 keys handed out this afternoon. Um, to provide a first-hand perspective now on the significance of this project, I would like to introduce Mr. Carl Sterling, a proud new homeowner here from Union Zakers. And Mr. Sterling at this time will move a vote of thanks. Community members, family, friends, and well wishers, good afternoon. It is both an honor and profound blessing to stand here before you today 
as one of the proud new owners, homeowners, and a representative of the Union Acres community. On behalf of all my fellow new homers, homeowners, I extend our deepest gratitude to everyone who contributed to making this housing development a reality. Today's occasion symbolizes more than just receiving the keys to our homes. It represents hope, opportunity, and a step towards a brighter future for our families and community, an extension of our nation. Allow me to extend a special thanks to those instrumental in realizing this achievement. First and foremost, I give thanks to God, whose guidance has inspired the vision, collaboration, and, dedicate, dedicate, and dedication of every individual and institution that had made this dream possible. To the government of Jamaica, under the leadership of our Prime Minister, Dr. Honorable Andrew Bolas, thank you for understanding that housing is a key to national development and for championing, championing initiatives that uplifts our communities. In your words, Prime Minister, housing is a fundamental to the social and economic well-being of individuals and communities. For your vision and leadership, thank you. Heartfelt thanks to the National Housing Trust for your tireless commitment to making home ownership accessible. And we heard our pronouncement by Prime Minister, the partnership between the Jamaican government and NHD is sound. The media outreach, publications, national outreach and unwavering support have empowered countless individuals, including us, to realize our dreams of owning a home. So special thanks to the National Housing Trust, led by Mr. Lincoln Freeman, Chairman of NHT, Mr. Donovan Evans, Regional Director, and Cheryl Brown, Scheme Team Supervisor, for your dedication and exceptional customer service throughout this entire process. And we already realize that this support will continue thereafter to the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions and the Jamaica Civil Service Association. We recognize your behind the scenes efforts to ensure that your members stayed informed and benefited from this development. Your advocacy and hard work have, is, is, have been essential to the success of this project. To Kankara developers, the engineers, construction workers, your collaboration with the National Housing Trust and civic groups has brought these homes to form from a plan to reality. Please know that you have not just built homes, you have built communities where families can feel safe, secure, and proud. The quality and attention to detail in these homes reflects your unwavering commitment to excellence. Finally, to every individual and entity, both mentioned and unmentioned, who played a role in making today possible, we are forever grateful. These homes are not just structures, they are symbols of Jamaica's determination to invest in its people and its future. As we embark on this new chapter today, I charge us, the new residents of Union Acres, to build on this foundation. Let us work together to foster a community that serves as a beacon of hope and unity, one that reflects Jamaica as a place of choice to live, work, raise families, and conduct business. Thank you once again to all who have made today possible, a legacy for generations to come. In the words of Henry Ford, Coming together is a beginning, staying together is a progress, and working together is success. May God continue to bless us all, and may Union Acres 
be a model of excellence for communities across Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sterling, and indeed we wish you and the new homeowners of Union Acres all the success. Uh, just a couple more activities left, ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap up this ceremony this afternoon. Firstly, I want to advise all our new homeowners that we'll take a group photo uh, just outside the ribbon cutting area on the road, so if you could assemble as quick as I've dismissed you, to that point so we can Thank you for staying with me up until this point, my people. So you would have seen all the presentations there and the plans that the Prime Minister has for the uh, country. Now, guys, I'll take you to the ribbon cutting ceremony and also tree planting. And we have some residents who would um, like to speak with the Prime Minister. Stay tuned. Oh,
Yes, my people, let me know your complete thoughts about the entire project so far, you know, from its inception to um, the handing over of keys today. You know, I am really happy for the 50 NHD contributors who've actually gotten their houses handed over today. You know, um, just imagine how they're feeling right now and their entire family must be um, over the roof right now, over the moon. Yes, guys, so an amazing, um, amazing um, event today. You know, everybody coming together as one and celebrating these new homeowners. <laughs> So what am I going to do right after that? I only speak the rich and talk like you know, touch on like water, walk on my phone, the money, man, for that, could I do for the ever and that. I do reggae music, cause it's a commotion. Brown boss. Brown boss. Brown boss. So what? Alright, real quick. Alright, so let's take the picture right here first, please.